Hello there. Good evening. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Let me know you can hear me. Hey, Sherry. Good evening. <laughs> I'm about to do a live uh, vlog. Young lady. Hello, Godmother. Hello, Cousin Sandra. How are you? Good to see you all. Well, thank you. Sherry says I look cute this evening. I know I don't have on my loungewear. I actually just walked in the door slipping kids around. So you're absolutely right. And I have on lip gloss. It's popping, right, right. So thank you, Sherry. I appreciate that. I haven't had time. I literally have not had time to go put my pajamas on because this is prime pajama wear this time of day. So, so thank you for saying that. Mm. Okay, I got sorority sisters joining, unsorority sisters joining. I always say, you know, we're all different gangs, so thank you. It's actually good. Some of my um, my children's teachers are joining us good because we have a good topic today that they are pretty familiar with. So I hope you all had a great weekend. I really do. Hey, I know you. Hello, singer. Good to see you. I'm trying to get to one of your gigs, so I'm hoping it'll be very soon. Singing was not my ministry, though I believe that it could be possible. Now, my children will tell you otherwise. They'll probably tell you that I sing in key W, <laughs> key Z, key X. <laughs> but in my mind, I'm Shaka Khan, in my mind. <laughs> you my sister-in-law's on hey girl who are you my chiropractor's on oh i miss you so much <laughs> come on back home it was really good to see you too my dear sore war it was amazing and we have to catch up so let's make that happen okay folks it is um seven o'clock or eight o'clock or five o'clock depending on where you are good evening I hope you are all doing well and um, hope you had a great weekend. I, our weekend was pretty busy. Um, our weekend actually started a day early. Uh, the husband and I were um, co-hosting part of a hosting committee for our children's school, their annual fundraiser. So shout out to MCP. Uh, we had a great time. It was wonderful seeing teachers who have now advanced. They're no longer teachers. They're in administration or they're doing bigger things. So it was really nice to connect with some folks and just sort of share our story on how we got to the school. Um, the fundraiser was an absolute success. So we are um, very excited. We raised more money than we have in previous years. So um, we're very excited about that. Um, Friday, I don't remember what I did. I think it was a blur. I don't recall. I don't remember. Like this, so we were running around so much. Um, Saturday, we were doing, um, I had a sorority meeting and then the husband and I are co-leaders of our church's marriage ministry. So we had an event on Saturday. So that was cool. Um, so a shout out to our church, CTK, um, for those married couples that came out. It was wonderful. We had a great time. Sunday, of course, was church. And I am also um, the assistant leader to our church nursery. So I love the babies um, and had a good time. Let me tell you something. So we do the nursery. It's, you know, zero to three years old. It goes down. It is lit in the nursery. It's lit. You know why it's lit? Because we have bubbles. Everything is better when you have bubbles, sugar, everything. Those babies come and they see bubbles. They know it's about to be a lituation. And we have snacks. Teach them a little Jesus. And then we send them home. So we had a good time. Uh, the husband and I had to put together our the baby's new bed and that I hate that stuff. 
See, that's when I, I wish we like win the lottery so we can get people to do that for us. I hate putting together stuff. I hate looking at directions. And you know, the husband and I at some point get into a fight about whether or not part X goes with part Y. It's it's there are many a times where I wonder why we didn't we, we were headed to divorce court. <laughs> but the bet is up. Um, so that is fine. And then, you know, today running around school and uh, meetings and the daughter had to get her hair done and all kinds of stuff. So before I start anything else, um, I want to say that tomorrow is an election day. Midterm elections go out and vote, be heard. Um, it Obviously, your, vo your voice matters because if it wasn't, there wouldn't be so many people trying to suppress it. So make sure that you go out and vote and see your people and vote for the right folks, whoever that is for you. Hey, Wonder Twin, how are you? Um, so, you know, what I want to talk about today, I want to talk about the black shirt. And um, those who are familiar with uh, the daughter's school know exactly what the black shirt is. So this um, episode is really about the daughter. And as most of you are aware, um, I have three children, right? You know that I have bookend boys and a girl in the middle. Uh, the daughter will be 12 in two weeks. So she has a birthday coming up. She's very, very excited. She wanted me to order her a sash and a crown because that's what we do. We celebrate our birthdays all month long. That's how we get down. <laughs> so um, I wanted to talk specifically about her because I wanted to talk about what happened to her over the weekend. Our daughter is very, very, very ambitious. She is driven. She is a go-getter. She is um, very much an overachiever, very much so. Those who know our daughter know that she plays no games when it comes to her academics, none at all. So much so, and I think I mentioned this in a previous post, that she would like to attend boarding school for high school. I'm not happy about it at all, to be honest with you, um, but she wants to do it. And so um, actually this upcoming weekend, we are going to go visit one. <sighs> pray for me as I pray for y'all. But she really, really wants to go. And part of the deal in us looking and investigating these boarding schools is that she would maintain an A average, right? Because we have three children, I'm not paying for college tuitions. You, you're gonna have to go for free or close to it in order for me to even consider it. In her school, um, they have something called the black shirt. And really what it is, and those of you who are my friends on social media, you may have recalled how we define black shirt. Um, her camp, there are four um, campuses, school campuses, four different locations, and every child wears a red polo shirt. It's part of their uniform, they have a uniform policy. When a child reaches a 93 average academically and uh, maintains what they call um, the TREK values or characteristics of excellence. And TREK is an acronym for, I believe, and someone's gonna kill me, let me see if I can try to remember it. Um, trust, respect, excellence, courage, and knowledge. Somebody will tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, but if the, those characteristics along with your academics yields a 93% or higher, Every quarter, they look at all the children, and if you are 93 or higher, you trade in your red polo shirt for a black polo shirt. And it's a big, big deal. It's really a visual depiction of excellence. And there are perks that are associated with the black shirt. As an example, you don't have to get your, they call homework life work. You don't have to get your life work signed because that's required every day. Um, like you get to get in front of the line. Um, you get to do things first before the rest of the class. If there's extra chocolate milk, you get chocolate milk because apparently that's what geniuses drink. They consume chocolate milk, apparently. That, that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> so there are perks associated with it. Not only that, but anyone who knows the whole um, reasoning and rationale are about black shirt, if we are outside of the campus, so I mean like 
Chick-fil-A, a movie theater, a supermarket. If someone recognizes the black shirt, they will immediately come to the daughter and give her accolades. Somebody we may not even know, maybe someone from another campus or an alumni of the school, they'll walk up to the daughter and go, okay, I see you black shirt, give her a little high five or okay, Miss A average, I see you, I, you know, I see you. And she's always very humble and smiles, thank you, thank you. So she is humbled, right? Outside, but in school, <laughs> she plays no games with her academics. We call her hashtag black shirt thirsty because every quarter, right in the middle of it, she starts to tell us to run her numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right around week eight, <laughs> she'll start hounding uh, the husband and I to see where she is academically. And then she'll decide, it'll motivate her to move, you know, possibly do something else in order to boost that grade. So much so that if she feels like, if she's in a group presentation and she feels like a member of the group or the entire group is not pulling their weight, she'll ask to move. <laughs> she'll ask to do a project by herself. <laughs> she is... When I tell you she is serious about her academics, she does not play. She has called out teachers. Every year, the daughter has what we call an epic math meltdown. Every year. She's been doing it since she was four. <laughs> she gets frustrated. She has this love and hate relationship with math. She, If she can do it, if she gets it, the concept right away, she loves it. If she doesn't and it takes a little time, she gets frustrated. She has called teachers out, threatened them. <laughs> and when I say threaten, threaten their salvation, said that she would um, bother them in heaven. That's a quote. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She plays no games. And black shirt is, it repeats every quarter. So just because you get it once doesn't mean you'll get it all year. It really is based upon your grades every quarter. Friday is the assembly. And so um, at the end of the quarter, there's an assembly and they give children, you know, their different awards. And the last thing they do is they name the black shirt children. And they probably get maybe 10% of the entire class, which isn't a lot. Somewhere between three and eight, maybe. I may have seen 10. That's the highest I've ever seen it. And when they announce black shirt, when I tell you, you can hear a mouse piss on cotton, when I tell you it is quiet, quiet, like you can't, you, it is silent. And they name each child and everybody's excited for them, etc. Friday was the assembly. They announce the black shirt uh, recipients. The daughter is already a black shirt. She came into the quarter black shirt. Call the names, and the daughter loses her black shirt by three tenths of a point. She got a 92.7, and she was devastated. When I tell you she was devastated, she called me hysterical, crying, Mom, I didn't get it, I didn't get black shirt, tears tears. I said, okay, sweetheart, I'm on my way. Now, <clears throat> she, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that she has such a meltdown because she has come closer than that. A couple of quarters ago, she missed it by a tenth of a point. She had a 92.9, a couple of quarters. And she was upset, but not to the level she was on Friday. So she is devastated. She is hurt. She is um, upset. I, um, she, yeah. So I go pick her up and she's waiting in the hallway. And I think she's emotional. And I think she's a little embarrassed because her feelings got the best of her. 
So we go in and we sit on the steps. And I hug her, give her a real big hug. I let her cry. And the teacher felt so bad. She really did. She was like, I feel so bad for her. And I smile and say, don't. Don't feel sorry for her. She'll be okay. And she will. So I dry her tears and I say, okay, baby. Here's the good news about this. Good news is that quarter's over. You're already starting on this quarter. And you will probably knock it out. And you have three more months, 12 more weeks to earn black shirt. This isn't the end. It's not like you'll never get it again. Wanna know something else? You still have an A average. Still, it's not like you lost it by a lot. That just means that you have to buckle up when we have parent-teacher conference in about a week. We can talk about exactly what happened and how we can boost your grade. She said, okay, okay. I said, I know, I know you're, you're sad and you're disappointed. Let me ask you something. How many of your friends got black shirts? So she named a couple. I said, were you happy for them? She said, mom, I was. I said, did you congratulate them? She said, I did. I said, good, because even though you're disappointed, they deserved a black shirt just like you, you would have if you had earned it. So were you gracious? She said, I was, mom. I said, okay, okay. But it, it got me thinking about us as parents. When she had the 92.9, my family was furious. <laughs> my extended family, not us. Her grandparents, her godparents, her aunts and uncles, they were like, that couldn't round it up to a tenth of a point. <laughs> they were going to call Reverend Al. They were going to get Don Lemon on CNN. They were going to pick at the school. They were going to sue. <laughs> her godmother is an attorney. She's like, we'll just sue. We'll, we'll just sue. <laughs> I'm like, really? For a tenth of a point? Pick another cause. <laughs> And, and here's why the husband and I are not upset about it. They have a standard. The standard is 93. Doesn't matter if you got 92.9. It wasn't a 93. You know what I hate? I hate when we make concessions for standards. In my mind, that teaches mediocrity. I hate that. I hate when children get participation medals, participation certificates. I hate that. I hate getting a medal for 15th place. I, I hate it. <laughs> I, and you know, I'm thinking about it when I was, when I was a child, that little BS certificate or medal or ribbon didn't make me feel better. It did not. It made me feel like a loser. So don't give me the stupid medal or the stupid ribbon for what? For showing up? It's dumb. And I wish you guys in, in academia, in student teaching, in schools, I wish you'd stop doing that. It doesn't teach your children anything. So if you just show up and do the bare minimum, you win a prize? I hate it. And I know what some of you are going to say, well, we want children to feel inclusive and be a part. Okay, but where's the competition? And I'm not saying that you have to feel as though um, that you're competing and better than someone, but there's something to be said about motivating somebody to, to be better, right? That's why we have sports, right? That's why Serena gets upset when she loses. That's why, you know, grown men cry when they lose the Super Bowl or the, or the Final Four, or the NCAA championship. That's why we have competition. It's the same for academics. Why do we have to do that? I hate that so much. And I think as parents, it's our responsibility to teach our children how to fail to fall safely. I really do believe that. What good is teaching her success if we don't teach her failure? And that's really our goal for, for the daughters. It's like, okay, you put your best effort in and you missed the mark. It's okay. You're gonna be fine. It hurts today. You're disappointed. We honor those feelings and then we keep it moving. And my fear is that if we don't do that, if we continue to coddle our children, you know, those children, those coddled children turn into coddled adults who can't handle failure. And when they can't handle failure and they're not used to failure, they do some extreme stuff. 
to themselves or other people. You can say what you want. I have seen it firsthand how people who don't know how to fall, they don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know what to do with themselves emotionally. They don't do it, know what to do with themselves physically. They don't know what to do with themselves. And it scares me. It feels like to me, I, and, and maybe just because I'm old, because <laughs> I'm, I'm old, um, I don't view failure as a failure. I view it as a learning opportunity, right? Like, isn't that what people teach you? Failure is not failure. It's just an opportunity for you to learn to be better at something, at something or something else. Maybe that particular thing is not your gift. Maybe you're supposed to be doing something over here. Or maybe that is your gift, but you didn't put the effort in. I mean, it, it, there's always something to learn from. Something, I don't even believe in failure. If you fail a grade, okay, because it has to be some sort of um, validation of the work that you do, right? So there, there, some of that is effort. But I don't view it as failure. I, didn't, I don't think that my daughter failed at all. You know, to me, it's like riding your bike. You know, when we were kids now, <clears throat> when I was growing up, full disclaimer, because I have family on um, on this video, um, you know, we didn't have helmets and knee pads when I was growing up. You fell, you fell. <laughs> you got on that 10 speed bike, that Huffy, that tricycle, whatever it was, you fell, you fell. You skinned your knee or your elbow, you got up, you went home, Got that burning iodine with the red stuff or some neosporin or whatever it was. You know, your mother kissed it, cleaned it up, put a nice Band-Aid on it, and you kept it moving. You know what you did? You got back on the bike. That's what you did. You got back on the bike. You learned a couple of things. Maybe how to use the brakes. Maybe turn the handlebars a certain way. Maybe not ride your bike in the grass. Who knows? But you learned something. But you got back on the bike. That's the whole purpose. That is the analogy of, the, of life, right? How do you know? your resilience if you never fall? How do you know you can get up if you don't fall? And we as parents have to teach our children to fall safely. That's our job. I let my children fall. Now I'm there, I'm not gonna let them fall too hard, but I do wanna be there to pick them up, show them how resilient they are and let them keep going. That's what you're supposed to do. Do you know how many coddled adults we have? Think about it. How many adults that you know of that can't handle losing to them, failing, making a mistake? This is really all it is, right? Making a mistake. Can't handle making a mistake. Can't admit that they make a mistake. Can't be accountable for making a mistake. What kind of people are those? People with no integrity. That's who they are. No integrity. Because see, part of being an adult is not just admitting when you're successful but also admitting when you're not. That's what makes you an adult, being accountable for all of your actions, not just the good ones, right? And we know people like that all the time, don't we? I do. I used to be one of them. It's embarrassing to fail, right? But it also makes you stronger, builds confidence, character. And so my poor baby, <laughs> Whew. she was crying bad day for her really bad day for her so we sat there until she was calm and one of the things we do um, in our home at the tribe called Goodman's House is that we allow everybody a pity party and we call it that We, if it's the husband myself, the children anything we say to them how much time do you need for your pity party? And we do that as a way to acknowledge that you're disappointed, um, validate their feelings, that they're upset, and use it as a way to be more solution focused, right? So in her case, I said, okay, I know you're upset, baby. How much time do you need for your pity party? She said, two days. I said, okay, two days? Two days, mom, I need two days. Okay, two days it is. What's gonna happen after that? Then I'm gonna figure out, we're gonna go to parent-teacher conference next week and, uh, and I'm gonna figure out 
what I did and what I need to do for next quarter. Okay. I said, you know what? She said, what? I said, you still have an A average. Still. It's not going to hurt you. You're not going to die over it. You're still the same little girl you were when you got up this morning. It's life, sweetheart. It's how you learn. You know how long her pity party lasted? Exactly 57 minutes. Mm -hmm. Picked her up. We went for ice cream. She talked to her brothers, laughed a little bit, and it was over. 57 minutes. That's all. So in my mind, we are succeeding as parents. Because if she can get over that as upset as she was, we're not doing too bad. We talked about it for a little bit, and it was over. So that is my rant today. Teach your kids how to fail. Be a safe place for them when they fall so that you can catch them, hoist them back up, and let them soar. That's what we're learning every day with these children of ours. She was hot too. <laughs> Man, if you could see her when she snitches on her, her classmates about when they're not putting in their full potential, she is so obnoxious. <laughs> But I can't be mad at her for loving her academics. Can't be mad at her for that. So there I am for today. Short, quick, to the point. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I would have music, but you know, Facebook knocks you out when you do that. No, Miss Vivian, I'm not wearing black in her on. I'm wearing black because it makes me look skinny. <laughs> so with that, folks, <laughs> love y'all so much. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I so appreciate you. Appreciate you. Please, please, please continue to share my YouTube channel. I have almost 100 of you. So thank you for that. I really, really appreciate that. Um, it means the world to me. If you like it, keep forwarding. I appreciate you so much. And I'm out of here. So have a wonderful week. Don't forget to vote tomorrow. Be a voice and be heard. Okay. And we'll talk soon. Talk to you later. Bye.